why would would you be quiet, please? I have the right to say what I want to say. What I think you're finished. reckless. I think you're reckless. <laughs> GOP dum dum Marjorie Taylor Greene was confronted during a town hall that she held recently in Cobb County, Georgia, by somebody who was rightfully angry about her reckless and bogus allegations against Jamal Bowman, her own colleague. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that particular story, we covered it a couple of weeks back, so I will link to that down below. But the TLDR version is basically that after Marjorie Taylor Greene and Jamal Bowman had an impromptu debate on the Capitol steps, well, she held this press conference where she basically said that she felt threatened by him. And she also referred to a moment when he heckled her when she was in New York protesting Trump's indictment. Here's what she said about him. His physical mannerisms are aggressive. I think there's a lot of concern about Jamal Bowman. So, and, and I am concerned about it. I feel threatened by him. Now, this is probably not surprising to anyone, but during that press conference, she went on to embellish and outright lie about Jamal Bowman. She claimed that he pushed Thomas Massey when they were having an impromptu debate about gun violence and gun control. And it's very clear what she was doing here. She knew exactly what she was trying to do. She was trying to weaponize her white identity to portray a black man as dangerous. And that is specifically what she was confronted about during this town hall. And she needed to be called out for what she did there because it was despicable and racist. But the person who was calling her out basically entered the lion's den and they did not want to hear what she had to say. But regardless, she was defiant and she confronted Marjorie Taylor Greene and it was great to see. So let's watch. I appreciate your questions. Um, and I'm gonna- I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. I didn't realize that we had to submit the question. Okay. I didn't realize that. My question is, do you know who Emmett Till is? I, I believe you know it's Emmett Till is? He, was, he was killed in a horrible, horrible way. That's my understanding. And I and think so I think question. it was horrific what happened to him. Yeah, that is that is a horrible thing. Should have never happened. And, and I said know, that publicly. Do you know who Carolyn Dunham is? Do you know who Carolyn Dunham is? No, ma'am, I don't. Uh huh. She was the woman who said that Emmett Till looked at her the wrong way or said something to her the way you did Jamal Bowman when you were on the steps of the Capitol oh talking about gun violence. You can leave. Why would, would you be quiet, please? I have the right to say what I want to say. Well, I think you're finish. reckless. I think you're reckless. You had no business saying, oh, he's so big. Oh, I feel so like he's going to hurt me. That's the same thing Carolyn Dunham said that got Emmett Till killed, and that was reckless. And you did a reckless thing. And if anything happens to Jamal Bowman, it's going to be on your hands. Well, let me ask you, were you in New York City when he stood outside my car and he came yes. in? No, 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 it's my yes. turn. No, ma'am, it's my turn. And he brought a crowd around me. Were you there? No, you were not in New York City when and that I'm happened. It's on video. And it's I'm on video. And you may watch the video. And you can see how he cussed. Ma'am, it's my turn. It's my turn. I listen to you. It's my turn. It's okay. We don't have to argue, but I let you speak, and now it's my turn. So I went to New York using my First Amendment right and using my free speech to defend President Trump and what I think is unconstitutional. And when I went there, Jamal Bowman came with a crowd and brought a crowd around my car. That the security had to put me in my car. And then he's on video, on and on and on, carrying on, cussing, calling, charging, wait, excuse me, charging me white supremacy. I'm sorry, that is insulting to me. That is a horrible thing to say to me. It is derogatory and it's wrong. And as a woman, if I feel threatened by a man that is bigger than me and yelling at me, I have the right to feel that way, just as you have a right to feel that way if a, a man that is much bigger than you was yelling at you and carrying on. Because that's wrong. This isn't about skin color. And I refuse, I refuse for you to do that. No, this is not about skin color. This is about, this is about respect, and this is about, this is about standing up for what's wrong.
do want to say it's right to listen to one another, though. I, I hate this arguing that's happened, but it's right to listen to one another. So, all right. All right, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Good on her for not backing down because she's correct, but I can't imagine that it was easy to confront Marjorie Taylor Greene about her lies in front of all of her sycophants. I mean, you saw they were hissing and booing, but what she said was correct, and it needed to be said. Has anyone actually said this to Marjorie Taylor Greene? Has any Republican sat down with her and just said, look, I understand that you feel this way, and you're probably not racist, but I mean, think of the optics for the Republican Party. Of course not, because they all agree with her. So has anyone actually confronted her about this up until this point? I mean, she was dragged in the press and in videos for saying that, but what she said was genuinely despicable. Despicable. Now, I want to talk about why it's so egregious, and I'm sure that most of my audience is familiar with Emmett, with Emmett Till's story, but some of you may be watching who are younger and just not know, or you want to brush up on that particular story, but it is very important. Emmett Till's story was important for the civil rights moment, and because of his story, I think that that has really left a mark on black men all across this country. And Emmett Till wasn't even a man. He was 14 years old, but due to false allegations made by a white woman who was racist, he was tortured and killed, again, at the age of 14. So if you don't know, here's Emmett Till's story. This is brief, but nonetheless, I do think it's still important to bring this up since it was referenced. So Emily Waxter Pettis of AP explains, in August of 1955, Emmett Till had traveled from Chicago to visit relatives in Mississippi. Donham, then 21, named Carol Bryant, accused him of making improper advances on her at a grocery store where she was working in the small community of money. The Reverend Wheeler Parker, a cousin of Till who was there, has said Till whistled at the woman, an act that flew in the face of Mississippi's racist social codes of the era. Era. Evidence indicates a woman identified Till to Donham's then-husband, Roy Bryant, and his half-brother, J.W. Millam, who killed the teenager. An all-white jury acquitted the two white men in the killing, but the men later confessed in an interview with Look Magazine. Now, as for Carol Dunham, whose lie got a child murdered, the New York Times adds, the local authorities initially issued a warrant for Miss Bryant's arrest on kidnapping charges, but it was never served. A grand jury in Greenwood, Mississippi, declined to indict her in 2007. The Justice Department announced in December of 2021 that it had closed an investigation into Miss Bryant, who was quoted in a 2017 book, The Blood of Emmett Till, as saying that she had lied when she claimed that Emmett had physically accosted her and had made sexual advances. That's the price that black men, in this instance, a black child, had to pay due to white lies. And there was absolutely no justice for Emmett Till. And Carolyn Dunham went on to live a very long life, and she only died in late April of this year. So she lived far longer than she deserved to, but thankfully she's dead now, and may she rest in piss. But that story is why Marjorie's allegations against Jamal Bowman were so despicable, so reckless. That woman was absolutely correct to call her out. And it's not the first time that a white woman weaponized her tears and supposed danger or feeling of afraidness towards a black man, and it won't be the last. But people who make false allegations like this have to be held accountable because what Marjorie Taylor Greene said was demonstrably false. We all saw the video that she told everyone to watch, but yet it doesn't matter. She lies. This is what the GOP does. She is aware of the danger that a white woman's tears can pose to a black man's life, but she did it anyway, and she knew exactly what the fuck she was doing. So shame on Marjorie Taylor Greene and good on that person for calling her out because it was well-deserved, even if it was probably really difficult to... Um, to say your piece when everyone was booing you and trying to get you to shut up and be quiet, but she didn't listen, and good for her. That woman truly knows what speaking truth to power entails, and I commend her for that.